Hello, I'm Lou Collins. Today I'm going to be taking you through basic guide to paper crafting and card making. Now, you can make so many different types of cards. These are a couple that I do. Now, I love card making because it's relaxing, okay? It's enjoyable. The, the supplies are easily to hand as well. I mean, you can buy them online, you can go to shops, there's classes widely available. It's a fantastic hobby to get started on. Now, these types of cards are beautiful because you can take all your different techniques and you will achieve a different effect every single time. So we've got matting and layering. We've got mirror card in here, which is a shiny card. We've got embellishments like realistic looking flowers. We've got cute little characters. There's lots of die cutting, there's lots of folding, and you can build up and work your way up to creating techniques like these. So there are many different types of cards that you can make. Now the first basic ones that you may start with are ones like these. Okay, so there's one score line down the centre. This would be a square card and this would be called a rectangle card. Now these are generally named by their measurements. So for example, this would be a five by five inch square card. Very simple to remember and you can use them in any orientation as well. Very often you'll actually buy your card bases like these. Now you can go on to more advanced cards as well. So there's also one called an easel card, which stands up much like an easel would, like so. There's also variants of this. So we also have one that stands up like this, called a twisted easel. Okay, again, you can see it's been made from just one sheet of cardstock. Now, when you build up one of these, you can get beautiful effects that look something like this. Very pretty, very dimensional. It's really going to wow anyone who receives that. So another type is an aperture card, okay? Now, these ones are fun because you could create aperture in any shape. So here is a basic circle aperture. So the aperture is a hole in the front of your card that you can see through. Now you could place something in there. It could be some acetate or some pretty paper, but it's very nice to be able to see through it. Then we have a shaped aperture. So this one is a reindeer head, but still the same effect. Now when you really build these up, you can create very interesting apertures. So you have your background behind the gap there and you build up your forefront. This is getting into more advanced techniques, but it's still something to start learning from basics. Okay, another shape is then a stepper card. Now these are a little more difficult because there's some scoring and some measuring involved, but you can easily get templates and you can get dies that will do this for you. Okay, so we have here, this one is called a mini center stepper. So you can see the step technique there in the middle and you have higher points on each end. Some stepper cards only have a higher point on one side and some are like this. This is called a circle stepper and I love that it rocks as well. So what you can do with a stepper card is then be building up dimension. So you have a forefront and a background and lots of different levels. So you can be adding embellishments at different levels to, to create dimension and interest there, okay? Now there's other shapes as well. We also have one called a gatefold. Now this is where the card is folded slightly differently. So it could be a square, it could be a rectangle, but essentially the two halves fold into the center. So your front page is split down the middle. Okay, now these are fun because you can really work with that, create doors as such. And when you decorate them, you can have beautiful intricate cards like this. Or you could really build a scene up and have something as beautiful as this. So gatefolds can be really good fun for things like invitations as well. Now a few more, we still have shaped cards to go through. Now these can be absolutely any shape you like. It could be hand cut, it could be a pre-made card base, or it could be die cut. Now this one is pre-made, so you would buy the card base bases like these. 
okay? And this one that I have here already decorated, if I pop those down, you can see this is a die cut shaped base. Really, really beautiful and it just gives some added interest. It makes your card stand out a little bit different. Now lastly, and probably my favorite of all the card shapes, is one we call either diorama or panoramic. Now this basically means you are building up a scene with a background and a forefront. It's a dimensional card. If we have a look at this and we can see all that dimension there, you can see through the card. So you can see how it would be easy to create a scene with that with embellishments and little pictures. If we have a look at the side, we've got some score lines there. That's what is giving this that dimension and making it pop out at you. I'll just show you a couple of other examples of this. So this one is one we've recently had on some shows and this is a shop window. So again, you would be able to build up your scene within this and this is just the basic card base. But this is an amazing card that's been built up with all the embellishments in there, all those, that scene work. I mean, absolutely stunning and this is by far, although the most intricate and time consuming, definitely my favourite card to take time and do, especially if I'm sending my card to someone really special. Now at my craft desk I would also always have a few select items and I'm going to run through these with you now. So let's pop these back out the way. Now first of all, and this is one of my favourite things to talk about, is actually my adhesives because I know there's lots of adhesives on the market and it can get a little overwhelming if you're new to paper crafts. So some of the basics that you will find are essential when you first start is a wet glue. Now this is very often a white glue that will then go clear as it dries. They are very strong glues and you may need to hold them just for a few seconds, but fantastic, especially if you're doing any sort of construction work. Then we have our double-sided tapes. Now there's two types. There's one here, this has a paper backing and this one is actually, a, you're able to tear it rather than cut it. This is fantastic because no matter how much of a width you need, you can use this and cut it down to size and also it's clean to use. As well as that tape, we have this one. This is called Super Sticky or Red Line Tape. Now it often has a red backing and it is really sticky. So if you are adhering something like plastic to your card, this would be ideal. But you can't tear this, you need to do, use your scissors with it. And then we have a tape runner. Okay, now this again is clean and dry, no tearing or cutting involved. You just run along where you need some glue and it will apply double-sided tape. It's, again, it's clean, it's very simple to use. So after those, we then need one of our very basics, is cardstock, and this comes in all shapes, colors, and sizes. Now I have here just a selection of a few of the colors that you may be able to get, and this is in A5 size. You can get A5, you can get A4, you can get 12 by 12, it depends on the type of project you are doing. And also paper goes up in weights, they're called GSM, and this one here would be around about 200 GSM, which would be perfect for die cutting or for scoring. Okay, so now also we need things like our scoreboard. Now this is fantastic for creating some of those shaped card bases that we were looking at before. For example, your easel and your stepper where you have score lines. You would just take off the tool and some of them are provided with a tool separate and it runs down the grooves with your cardstock in and it will create a nice smooth crease for your card. So that is another essential. Then we go on to our cutting tools. And these are a few that I always have in my craft tote. I take them everywhere with me. So I have my mini trimmer. This will cut up to a four size cardstock and it has a replaceable blade. It also has a grid line on there. Then we have scissors. Now there's lots of different types of scissors. If you already do fabric work or you think you might do fabric work in the, in the future, buy two pairs because you want to keep one for your paper and cardstock and one for your fabric. And then we have a craft knife. This is fantastic for doing detailed, tiny cutting work. For example, if you're fussy cutting around something. So pop those to the side. If you do have caps with your cutting tools, it's an idea to keep those on because a number of times I've caught myself with them. 
Now, it may sound obvious, but a pencil and a ruler is an essential. You're working with paper, you want to mark where you're going to fold, where you're going to cut before you do that. So I would find a good quality steel ruler and a nice pencil to work with. And then it goes without saying, maybe a sharpener and a rubber as well. Okay, so lastly, we also have embellishments. Now, this is where every craft store is filled with embellishments. So you can buy so many. There's ribbons, there's gems and pearls, there's, I've got some flowers here. These are the essentials that I would bring with me anywhere if I was crafting. But you can also get things like stickers, you can buy tags and you can buy fabric embellishments. There's a whole host of things you can buy. You can then go into your die cutting as well. So these are the parts of the card that are going to finish off. These are going to be your finishing touches that are going to make your card really, really special. Okay, so what I'd like to do is run through just four of the basic techniques that you would start with if you're beginning in card making. Now the first one is one you'll come across a lot if you're following any instructions, maybe in a magazine, and it's called matting and layering. Now what this does is it brings colour and dimension to your card very quickly and simply. This is where something like your paper trimmer would come in really handy. So if you have a look around the outside of this card, you can see we've got a lovely border all the way around the edge of gold. And then our main piece is matted on top of this gold panel. So it's basically two squares or whatever shape your card is, one smaller than the other layered up. And sometimes these will be layered up with some foam tape or foam pads rather than flat tape to give it even more dimension. So another technique is called stenciling. Now there's lots and lots of stencils on the market and they would look something like this and they may be called masks. Now this mask in particular is snowflakes but you can create your own masks by cutting out of some plastic or some cardstock if you don't want to use it again another time. Or you could even go to more advanced techniques and start die cutting into some masks. But this one is a store-bought one and what we can do is very carefully rub a little bit of ink or paint through it. You could also use something like a spray, you can buy ink sprays and spritz through the gaps in the mask and when you peel it off you can create beautiful backgrounds like this. So another technique that uses ink like this is stamping. Now there's lots of different types of ink and they can get a little confusing, but there's three basics. So you have a dye ink, a pigment ink, and then you have a solvent ink. Now the solvent ink is one that will stick to any surface and it dries quickly. So for example, if you wanted to stamp something onto a balloon, that would hold with a solvent ink. Now, if you wanted to stamp onto something and allow it to dry quickly, but it's just cardstock, you can use a dye ink. But if you want to do a technique called heat embossing, so you need your ink to dry slowly, that is where you would use a pigment ink. Now, I know online there's lots and lots of different examples of these inks and what they do, so it's well worth researching before you buy your first ink pad. But an ink pad is a sponge and it has the ink sitting in it. Now it's a good idea to store these upside down so that that ink sits on the surface of your ink pad so it's there ready for when you want to use it. Now the stamps that I'm using are called clear acrylic stamps and they usually come on a backing like this. You peel them off and then you stick them to a clear block. Now I've inked my stamp. I'm just going to press this down onto some cardstock and you give it an even pressure all the way over. And you can see you have a beautiful stamped image there. Now, this is a fantastic way of adding design, detail or a sentiment to either the outside or the inside of your card. And it's fantastic because you can then go in and you could even colour your stamped image as well. So one more technique is called punching and it's not probably the punching that you're, you first think of, it's actually using these. These are called punches, they are metal on the inside and if I just flip one over for you, 
I've got some pieces in here we can see that we have some metal there and these are like cutting blades so they will cut your paper or your cardstock in the design of the blades now all punches will have on them somewhere the design so you can clearly see what they are so this one is a border because it's a long one this one will punch a scalloped circle so if I pop some cardstock inside here now we've got a little gap that runs along the edge I'm just going to slide that in and we squeeze our punch and you'll see that there's a circle pops out of the bottom now if I hold that up sorry that way there we go we can see we've got a beautiful very neat scalloped circle punched out of it now I'm going to do the same quickly with the border punch so I slide it into the punch I squeeze down and there we go you can see that that has created this beautiful cut border that you wouldn't be able to do yourself with scissors or a craft knife now I'd like to take you through a few basic projects that will take you through some techniques that you would do maybe if you were just starting out the first one I'm going to look at is stenciling now this is a fantastic technique that you can do with ink or paint and it, you don't have to spend a lot of money to start doing this which is brilliant now I've got here some stencils and these are some reasonably basic ones I think these are ones that I actually found um, under children's crafts because children do stenciling as well so you can take their their supplies and use them for your card making so I'm just sticking these stencils down onto a piece of cardstock and I've chosen to use an ink and a brush now this is a stiffened paintbrush that I can just brush the ink quite accurately into so I'm just dabbing my paintbrush onto my ink pad and I'm going to work in small circles around the stencil making sure that I'm catching all the edges and that no part of it is getting missed there we go now it might be that you need to hold your stencil still it may be that you need to use a little bit of maybe repositionable tape just to hold it down so you're not touching it with your fingers and getting paint on your fingers but like I say this is a great way to get started in adding backgrounds to your projects or like this a sentiment and this is something you can get the children involved in as well so as I reveal these I'm just going to peel that off and see we start to see the words in the background coming along now I've chosen to write the word dad here this means that you could actually spell out any name you like now I've added some tape onto the back of this piece already so I can now stick this onto my card there we go lining that up and we've got a very basic dad card there using a stenciling technique so next I'd like to take you through punching and a technique that I use for creating beautiful cards with detailed edges just using my punching tools now one of my favorites is a border punch and this very easily and quickly creates a decorative border now you can line these up by using the grid on the top and at the sides there so if I I've cut once if I place this back into my punch and use that design to line up the first part along here I know that when I punch again I'm going to have a continuous border so if I keep going line this up once more and punch and then lastly once more there we go so any little bits you can just pull off there or you can use your scissors to snip and when we place this over some colored card you can really see it's picking that out it's bringing it to life I'm going to use a tape runner to stick this down very very quick and clean adhesive to use Place that onto a nice bright cardstock now you can get things like wood grain cardstock lots of different di designs of patterned cardstock available online and make sure one tip make sure that your card opens the right way before you stick it down 
because lots of times I've stuck things down onto my card front and then realised they've opened the wrong way. And lastly, just to finish this card off, quick sentiment in the top corner. Now, I think that really brings that decorative border to life with that bright colour behind it. Lastly, I'd like to show you matting and layering. Now this is a technique that you will find, if you watch Create and Craft, the demonstrators use this all the time. So basically matting and layering, as I've explained before, is putting two pieces of cardstock, one on top of the other, with a border around. So the bottom one will be slightly larger than the top. So let me glue these ones down that I've pre-cut, and then we'll cut one together around a sentiment. You can see this square has been cut slightly smaller than the colour cardstock underneath and it's a good idea to try to colour coordinate each layer and use your card base as one layer as well. There we go, so we have the white card base, some pink solid cardstock and then some white flowery pattern paper. Okay, so lastly, let's do this together because I want to show you how I measure and cut. I'm going to place my sentiment down onto some pink. This is the same pink as I've used in my background. So I'll use tape on this. And this is already cut to size, this sentiment is. Pop it up to a corner with the desired border on the two edges there ready. Then I'll take a pencil. I'm just going to lightly mark roughly where I'd like my border to come on the two edges that need cutting and we can use a paper trimmer to trim these down. So you can see I put my cut line in the groove there and slice that away. Very quick, easy, it's ever so neat using a paper trimmer. So that is absolutely perfect. And just to finish this card off, I'm going to do exactly the same on the green to show you again. So glue the back stick it to, I mean this is a scrap of card but I have a right angle here, so I'm going to use that right angle, make sure that two edges are identical and then mark where I'll be cutting again. See matting and layering can be as in depth as you like, it could be very simple just with one piece, but if you have a simple embellishment that's going on a card and you need to fill it, it's a good idea to use lots of matting and layering to fill the space on the card. So let's pop that in the centre. There we go. You can see how that fills out that card space. So that was a basic guide to card making and paper crafting with some basic tips and techniques. Thank you.